<laughs> and people are still getting foreclosed every day. Every day people are getting foreclosed by Wells Fargo, even though we have all these big homes. Their house is being sold while they're still living in there. Uh, I know. Is that our state for the market? Look at those hot rodders over there. You mean wrong?
that I give up. No, I went to D.C. to get involved in the inaugural protests that were going on in 2004 and got involved with D.C. Anti-War Network, which, by the way, was um, a consensus-driven process, and we planned, they, well, I got there January 18th, so I didn't really plan it, even though I got involved with them later. They, um, they about, they planned, a ten, like 10 or 12,000 people showed up in Malcolm X Park and marched down to the White House in 2004 and did die-ins in the street like at 17th and H Street and stuff and like blocked traffic. And I was just like, I wanna be a part of this. And that's where I first learned about consensus decision making. Well, you know how many people it was that planned that march of 10,000 people, 12,000 people and pulled it off and got all this press out of it? Like 12 or 15 people. A circle of 12 or 15 people. So please don't think your Occupy is small. If any, the time you're wasting saying, oh, people are leaving, is time you could be getting together and say, let's think of creative ideas. Let's, you know, let's do that. Those isms, I want you to think about how to address those. Because that's part and parcel to what it's going to mean to confront the capitalist system. Because all of those things are coming out of the system to do what? Keep us divided and busy and hating each other. And within the 99%, we like to think we're all one homogeneous, monolithic group, but we're not. But that doesn't mean that we can't organize ourselves to confront our enemies, our common enemies. And so that's what we have to begin to do. So part of that means rewiring our brains and the way that we think about things the way that we operate in spaces. And I'm serious about that. It, it means consciously rewiring how you think about other people. So when you're in a space and you look around, you need to start to be uncomfortable when everybody looks like you. Now sometimes this is appropriate. If it's an all-woman space, that's cool because it's 
is for a particular thing, but if you're in a social justice space and you look around and it's all white, male, what you gonna feel? You gonna start, I want you to start to feel uncomfortable. I want you to, in your gut to say something is not right here. I don't know what it is, but something is not right here. How do we really make a change? You know, people all over the world have demanded change. In Africa and the Arab world, in Europe, you know, they're not afraid to take to the streets and fight till they make that change. And that's what we need to do here in America. This beast is out of control. They own the police. They own everything, all the buildings. They own all the food chains. You know, so we have a long ways to go. And our battle is big. We're up against great odds. That's who we are as people that we are now. The Occupy movement. So there's a specific Iraq War veteran, a guy who joined the Marine Corps, came home, joined up with Iraq veterans against the war, found himself at Occupy San Francisco. His name's Scott Olson. Woo! And when they had violently evicted Occupy Oakland, he was among the folks there at night trying to reclaim Oscar Grant Plaza. And uh, him and a friend of mine named Joshua Shepard, another Iraq veterans against the war member, stood in front of the riot police, as you know well. And Scott Olson was shot in the face with tear gas cancer and had his skull broken. And a month later, when Occupy Oakland came out and had their general strike, Scott Olson was out there blockading the port with them with his neck brace on. This song is dedicated to him. And it's days like this, when something clicks, when you're confused, tired, and scared of shit. But your body's alive with that heartfelt drive, and you engage the problem right before your eyes. When you could have ran, but you stayed sad, when you were beaten and gassed, and you still came back, that feeling a power that you got deep down rises to the top. When you get beat down, there's a world of win. When your heart is strong and it does a new wrong to focus on, every day brings a vision to strive for, something to live and die for. And when you go back home and you're on your own, it's easy to feel like you're all alone. But it's through memory and hope that we stay supported, cause we can't quit now. We can't afford it, hold the line. Even if your voice shakes, friend of mine, even if your voice shakes, push forward, it's up to you to see it through.